I'm in a city. I'm in a city. Okay, guys, I might need a little bit of help here. If you notice, I have my temperature set, and just recently the printer has started doing this where it looks like it's losing the temperature sensor data and it's basically going out of the temperature control. And as you guys know, if you print with an unheated bed for some materials, this could be in big problems. So, um, has anybody else seen their mini do this? And if so, do you have any guidance? Or am I gonna to have to send this back to Mono Price? All right, thanks guys. Hey everybody, how's it going? Our House 21 here, and it's time for some surgery. So, this is my 3D printer. It's a Mono Price Select Mini version 1.0. I happen to love this thing. I think it's, for the money, I think it's one of the best 3D printers on the market. You know, bang for the buck off the mirror. It's an awesome little printer. You can get these guys uh, normal price for just under $200. Well, this is a version 1.0. They're actually up to the 2.0s now. The differences between the two, they've upgraded the user interface a little bit. They've insulated the print bed. They now ship with BillTac. I've already insulated the print bed. I've put BillTac on. So I'm pretty much good to go. I don't have the newest firmware, but it works the same. It's just a little prettier. But as much as I love this thing, it's not without flaw. So one of the major complaints about this printer is the fact that if you look over here, it's got a nice little compact design, but you see the print bed here. If I turn it on the side here, you can see that there's some wires that are routed underneath here. And see, so go up through this little channel and through the bottom of here. And over time, well, okay, first off, these wires are actually the power wires to the heated print bed and the uh, signal wire for the temperature sensor. So, just because of, of the way that the wires are routed, over time, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like this. These little wires actually end up, the ones that go to the temperature sensor end up breaking. They end up getting an intermittent short in them and they stop working. So the way that most guys get around this is they just say, screw this wire routing and they drill another hole in the back of the chassis here and, and reroute this wire. So they drill it, pull it up, and then um, basically, um, you know, put some wire loom in, dress it up, make it pretty and everything. But they they get, they get change this wire routing. Well, because the other weird thing that happens here is that with this wires just kind of sticking here, they end up bouncing around and they, and they kind of interfere. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a belt that's under here that actually drives, connects to the stepper motor and moves this thing back and forth. So it's, you know, it's, it's for a lot of reasons, it can just kind of get in the way and it can, um, you know, things wear out over time. So that's, like I said, big reason why a lot of guys do the mod, they drill the hole out, they reroute this wire. And so a lot of times they go from here into here and then you don't get anything pinching and everything's gravy. Um, so I kind of don't want to do that. And it's not because there's anything wrong with that uh, solution. Actually, it's a very good solution. I just like to be contrarian. You know, I, I just like to do things a little different sometimes. So, I mean, like I'm looking at it here and I think I actually see where the problem is. There's a little hard kink that's right here in the wire. And I, I, I have a feeling that if I took apart this wire, that's probably going to be where the short is. But this is just standard electronics wire. You know, just uh, it looks like it's either 18 gauge or 22 gauge. So it's pretty thin stuff and thin wire hot bed back and forth back and forth back and forth thousands and thousands of times eventually something's going to give so i'm in the rc you guys know that so i figure i'm going to try things a little bit differently so if you see right here i've got some rc grade silicone wire now this stuff is kind of special because let me just go ahead and open it up 
So those who aren't in the RC, who've never seen this stuff, this is special because number one, it actually has high temperature rated silicone for the wire installation. So that's really soft stuff and everything. But the other thing about this stuff is that the wire that is made out of is pretend extremely fine, extremely fine copper wire that is um, extremely flexible. You know, this stuff is made to go through thousands and thousands of cycles in high vibration environments and not short. This wire will probably work really great in the stock location of this. So I'm going to take this guy apart and I'm going to extract the original wire from under here. Actually, you know what? Yeah, so this is substantially thicker as well. So that shouldn't be an issue. There's plenty of room to go through here. Um, but yeah, this wire should be much better suited for this than the stuff that's in here. You know, I probably should replace this wire here as well, because it looks like it's the same grade, but this seems to still be working. This isn't. So I'll go ahead and I'll take care of that. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So there are instructional videos on how to do this. I'm not gonna watch any of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and dive in. Uh, it's pretty straightforward design. I don't think I'm gonna screw it up too badly. Uh, but just a little, little survey real fast. We have the print bed right here. I'm gonna have to take the print bed off to access the wire connections where everything's soldered to through. So. I can see that the wire comes out and goes in this little grommet down here. So I'm going to have to, you know, so other guys take off the print beds because they're rerouting things. I don't think I'm going to have to do that because I think that these plugs just have a connector that I can pop out and I can just fish it through. So it looks like what I need to do is take off the bottom plate so I can access what's inside of here and we'll, let's start there. All right, so I'm going to set it down this way so it's angled so everybody can see what's in here. All right, okay, all right, that's good. And it helps if you have the right kind of bit. So this is Phillips. So, there we go, Phillips. All right, there we go, six screws. And ta-da, okay. So, this is actually a very straightforward design here. So I've got this little board here. Let me see if I can angle this so you can see it. So, it looks like we've got this little controller board down here. Oops, I'll adjust it. Okay, so it looks like we've got this little controller board down here. So I sit right here, mounted to this uh, base plate. And then on the inside, let's go ahead and turn it so you can see. Be careful I don't screw up anything. So we've got the stepper motor for the Z-axis buried down in here. Actually, no, this is probably for the Y axis, X, Y, Z. Okay, so it's either the X or the Y axis. Um, that's what the stepper motor down here is for. Then we've got, uh, looks like there's all the gut to go up for the Z axis. Okay, and I've got the control panel interface. So it's all pretty straightforward. So I think that all I need to do from here is just unplug this wire that goes up to, goes up through here and up to the print bed. So let me go ahead and find the right one and unplug it. Okay, let's 
first let me find a good orientation to set this thing down. I think this work. All right, so now let me scoot it back a little bit. Okay, here we go. All right, so just again, tracing back, I've got four wires that are coming through here and they're connected with a cable tie. We'll go ahead and cut that bad boy. Carefully, you don't want to cut the wire by accident. And I've got plenty of black cable ties to get me through. Okay, so actually I'm going to use a twist tie. I just had a twist tie. Oh, okay. That's not a twist tie, here we go. So actually I'm going to use a twist tie just to go ahead and keep the ones together that I want to make sure I don't screw up so all right so first let me find the right wire so find this guy right here and I'll just pull on it see who gets tight there we go are you that one this is that one so let me just cable here so I, I know that these don't get confused pull this guy out that. Verify that it's the right one. Yep, that's it. So next up, there's another cable tie up in here. Let me go ahead and cut that guy off. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now this come free. So now I can just pull this guy all the way through. Okay. All right, that's straightforward enough. So I've got this little wire coming out through here. So now I need to take off the build plate so I can desolder the end up here. Now I have two choices. I could take apart this connector here and try to solder the new wires into these little leads. I don't think that's worth it. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do, uh, cut this off like just a couple inches into it, solder the new wire, and then uh, do some uh, heat shrink tubing around it. So that way it, um, it's gonna be a nice, good secured solder joint. So, all right, so just, so first off, let me just go ahead and take this guy out and then we can take care of that a bit later. So I'll just set this back like here and I'll just set it down on the bottom. Just so it's, it's taking the weight. All right, that's fine. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and screw it back in uh, with two screws that way. I know it's structural, so I don't accidentally mess something up. All right, sweet. Okay, so back up. So now this is the fun part. Oh, hmm. I should have raised the print bed before I started doing this. Oh, that's okay. All right, so what I want to do here is these right here, I believe, are two or two and a half millimeter hex bolts. I've got a two millimeter here, and that's exactly what they are. I think that should work here. All right, so this is where it gets complicated because the way that I usually keep these guys level is I count the turns, but I can't really count the turns doing it like this. So what I'm going to do is uh, get my set of calibers and measure the distance in between here. And I'm going to use that to get me back in the, uh, in the right neighborhood. So let me go grab my calibers and then um, I'll write down a number and we'll go from there. So I 
I've got 9.6 millimeters here. Okay, I've got 9.9 .9 there. Let's double check this one. Yeah, 9.9. .9. There's a little piece of tape that I have right here to mark the location of the bill attack. So that was screwing up the measurement. So I got 9.9 .9 millimeters on both sides. I'll check this side too. Yep, so I just want, so now I know when I put this guy back together, I should get it cl as close as I can to 9.8, 9.9 millimeters on each side, and the bed should be close to level. But I'll still have to go through the bed leveling process again. Okay, so now I'm going to change out the bit, and this guy's just held on by these four screws on either side, so I'm going to go ahead and get these guys off. Now this is where you have to be a little bit careful. You don't want to lose anything here. Your, the build plate is held on by these four screws, and each of the screws have these pieces here where you have a little hat and a cup they're the same piece but so you have this little these little top and bottom piece cushioning the spring and the screw just holds everything together so make sure you don't lose any of these because if you do you're kind of up the creek so I'm just gonna set mine over here Be careful, take your time, go slow. You know all the routine. That's two. Let me get the other two. And as you can tell, this build plate's been apart before because I had to do my insulation. Now this might also be a good time for me to change my build tack, but I'm gonna try to milk a little bit more life out of this stuff. It's not cheap. It lasts a long time. But as you can see, I've kind of got, I don't know if you can really tell here, it's peeled up a little bit in the middle, so it's not sitting flat like it should. Maybe I will just go ahead and change it out. Um, but yeah, so you can see underneath here, we've got, these two big wires here these are the power wires for the um, it's held down by cap on tape but these are the power wires and these two little ones are the thermistor wires so I need to desolder these two so I can pull them off and as you can see my little guy here got my little notch in here for that I'm gonna set this to the side I'm going to try to reuse this Kapton tape, so I should peel this off carefully. You know what? I'm not going to use that. If the tape doesn't want to restick, I've got some other. I've got other tape I can replace it with. One of the first things I did when I bought my printer was get a roll, a couple rolls with a couple of different sizes of Kapton tape. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this piece of Kapton tape off very carefully. And so you, if you don't know, Kapton tape is just, it's tape that's made out of a special material to have very high temperature resistance properties. So it's really good stuff. And it's also has low residue, so it's it's just it's really useful. It's really good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna rig this up like this, so I could desolder. Okay, so this is a good time for you to take mental notes or to take pictures, so you know how things are supposed to line back up. In this case, you have positive and negative. The positives stay together, the negatives stay together, and they're both 
sitting right there in the middle. If you want to get extra paranoid so that you don't forget it, you can always do something like this. Take a marker pen and just put positive and negative so you don't forget. I'm not going to forget, but I'm doing this for illustrative purposes. Okay, so now let me go ahead and get my solder set up ready. I'm using a 6040 rosin core solder and got my handy dandy little welder soldering gun. So let me get this, let this guy heat up. And this is a good time for me to write down that measurement so I don't forget it. down the measurement I'm going to set it over here where I won't forget it okay all right so soldering iron has now gotten the temperature that's very nice of it let me go ahead and make sure that the tips clean Make sure I got some solder here on the tip. Always be careful not to breathe the fumes. This is not the most health friendly stuff. I would say be careful not to put too much heat into this build plate. This general practice when you're soldering, you don't want to over temp what you're doing and damaging it. But this is a heated build plate. I don't think you have to worry about that so much here. But it's still not a bad idea. And you don't want to come off now, do you? say I could just cut you off I don't want to do that okay keep the wire away from the cat end okay so now this is off so I can just go ahead and pull this through like so so now what I want to do is measure up the same length slightly differently. I thought that one was a different length than the other for a moment. All right. So all I want to do is take this right here and line, measure it up so I know that the new wire is at least as long as the old wire. Honestly, I could probably give it a little extra just for slack, but there's probably not any reason to really do that. Okay, so I've got that link right here. So I'm just going to double check this again, make sure that everything lines up, which it does. All right. So I'm going to cut it maybe just a few millimeters longer than it needs to be, just so I have room to splice and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to do it like an extra centimeter. So 
that's good. So now what I need to do is strip these and tin them so I can go ahead and solder on this side and then uh, splice the connection on the other side. So actually I'll take care of this wire first and I just get it out of my hair. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it. I'll, I'll give it like this much length. I'll cut it right there. All right, so now I'm gonna use one of my handy dandy little tools to strip this wire. So this little sucker here, um, I wanna to, want to twist these guys together so I'm gonna to make it a little long. So I'm giving it, you know, better part of a millimeter, I mean a better part of a centimeter. So about a quarter of an inch, almost half an inch. It's actually kind of a long strip, but okay. All right, so there we go. Both of them nice and stripped. So let me do the same on the other side. Probably don't need to go this long, but it's, I like to have a little extra meat in my connections. Okay, so there we go. And this is what I was saying before, like see how fine this wire is compared to, I mean, this is a couple, a few thick strands. This is just, uh, this looks like almost hundreds of teeny tiny little strands in here. All right, so, so let me go ahead and twist these little guys together. So then I can add a little bit of flux to them and make this a nice good solder joint or I should say a good set of solder joints so you know just taking and twisting them together there's a bunch of there's a bunch of different ways to do splice solder joints I'm not going to give you the whole history of solder joints and all that but yeah so you just want to I like to just twist them together like this and because this wire is substantially thicker than this one, I'm going to lay, after I solder it, I'm going to lay it down like that. So let me go ahead and get this one. And so once I lay it down, then I'll do the heat shrink over the whole thing. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and solder this now. That way I don't have to worry about it wielding its way off later. Okay, so... A good practice is to use some sort of flux. Flux is an interesting material. It basically coats the wire and keeps it from corroding at temperature, which basically gives you a cleaner solder joint. Ordinarily, I use like a um, like a toothpick to like stick it in and wipe. It. I'm going to go ahead and do that. A lot of people use like a paintbrush or something to coat soft, coat flux. Um, I'm the stuff that I have is kind of nasty. There's different types of flux. Some is better for you in the environment than others. This stuff I don't think is good for anybody or anything. So um, I just use a toothpick because it's disposable. All right, so let me go ahead and put some heat in here. And standard soldering practices apply. You want to put. You want to put the heat on what you're on the joint and then apply the solder to the material not to the iron that's a good way to guarantee that you had good solid solder joint once it's hot it'll flow through the joint Probably should have pulled this out earlier. A little heat shrink kit. And as a general practice, you want to use the smallest heat shrink that will fit around the wires that you're working with. That guarantees you get a nice, good, solid connection. This should be fine. Just double check it on the wire. I'm going to wait to heat shrink it until I got both wires all situated. Yeah, this slides over fine. So I'm going to take this and cut this in half. Yeah, right about 
about there. So half of this gets to go on the red wire, half of this gets to go on the black wire. Okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set this here and slide it in place. So like I said, I'm gonna lay this flat like this. slide this over it's better to not drop the thing that your other piece of heat shrink when you do this save yourself a little effort All right, so okay so turns out this heat shrink that I picked was a little too small so I had to go a couple sizes bigger, but that's okay. So I'm going to do both pieces of heat shrink after I'm done. So let me go ahead and solder up the second wire. And this is the same procedure as before to get this out. And I want to give it a good twist around so that these are locked together. Like that. And give it a little flux. here. Use my little helping hands to hold everything in place. Here's a little tip. Make sure that the tip of your starting iron is clean. Looks like I got some residual gunk on it. That's making it tougher for heat to transfer. Alright, now that I clean the gunk off, I can re-tin it. Tinning is just a process of making sure there's nice clean solder on your tip. That's much better. Of course now when I touch this, it's probably just going to flow. Yep, there it goes. All right. Okay. So now that both of these guys are nice and secure with solder, I can put the heat shrink on. Just enough. Okay, it's not my prettiest heat shrink solder job, but it works. Okay, so now on this other side, I want to adjust my strippers to be a lot smaller. So maybe about that much, a little smaller. Uh, like right here. That looks like it's about, yeah, just half a centimeter, about five millimeters. So let's go ahead and strip these guys. Probably should do this one at a time, but I screw it. There we go. So now I want to tin these bad boys so that they can solder nicely. So I just got it right here. I'm just going to dip them in. separation and put them in the same clamp. All right. Okay. 
what happens when you tin a wire the wire actually the solder actually soaks into the wire and it travels up so that makes the whole thing not one nice big secure stiff unit which is important when you got these little itty bitty wires like this like these little strands you don't want them flying all over the place all right so now i've got that in place now i get to solder these guys back down so it looks like whoever's it looks like whoever soldered this originally wasn't the best solderer so it's kind of a little bit of a hack job here so I'm going to try to do a little bit nicer job than they did so I think I'm going to do that by using a little bit of tape painters tape in this case to hold the wires in place so they don't move so I just got some masking tape here I just use that masking tape is nice because it doesn't leave a lot of residue already see there's an issue these wires are bigger than the other ones functionally it shouldn't really make a big deal but that just means I have less margin to play with for maneuvering them I gotta be careful not to touch them when I solder and all this other good stuff so just gotta be careful to get it on its contact and nowhere else so I'm going to start with this one since it's right in front of me. All right. So this is important. Make sure to re-inspect the joint when you're done. Okay, put the heat into what you're working with. And this thing should get nice and soft like it just did. Go down. I'm going to add a little bit of solder to make sure sure that it flows where it's supposed to. Okay guys, through the magic of editing, I went ahead and I got the print bed back in place. I used my course measurements to get the um, get everything roughly in the right spot so I'm gonna have to go back and do a full leveling but got everything back down and I fished the cables through the right place I need to go back and put a couple zip ties to hold these suckers together but yeah that that'd be a second so let me go ahead and get this bottom cover off again zip tie so I can just secure those together. And this is pretty straightforward. Zip tie. I just want to do it right here where the bumble comes out like that. And this should be I believe it was right around here that they were tied together. So I'll just do it again right there. Okay. And a good old snip. Okay. And now inside. That's a little thing here. And I believe there was a tie. Right at this point right here, you can actually see where there's a little bit of kink there. So I'll zip tie it in the same spot again. That's interesting. Oh, okay. I zip tied it with the black wire here having a little bit more going through than the red wire. said that backwards, but you can write it down. 
Okay, feels more even now. Okay, so we zip tie these guys back together. Right around here. So now I can plug this back in. Right here. Let me just set this back in place. And I'm going to go ahead and put the two screws I had in before back in place just to hold it down. And then I'm going to just double check. Actually, no, before I do that, I'm just going to put the one screw on. I'm going to check the frame of motion. Alright, so let's just make sure nothing binds up. Alright, so I see what people were complaining about because you can see it does come up and it rubs up against that belt. when it comes all the way in towards the end of its range of motion it gets really bunched up in there so I can see how the the thin gauge wire just over time just crapped out so hopefully this new wire that I put in here is going to hold up a lot better all right, so, but it goes through the full range of motion. It seems to be okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and button it up and give it power and, uh, and make sure that I'm getting valid temperature data. All right, that seemed to be happy. Okay. Let me grab the power cable and let's see how this thing heats up. Okay. Power's on. Okay. Let's get some temps. I don't think the extruder is hot. Okay, let's eat the bed hot. Warm that sucker up. Alright, seems to be working. So we see the bed is heating up. So I didn't mess up the temperature. Okay, so we can see the bed is heating up. So I did not see, apparently mess up the heating element. Looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. <clears throat> All right. So, only time will tell how long 
Only time will tell what the long-term durability of this fix is, but I'm overall pretty happy with it. Um, I know a lot of guys are going to yell at me. They're going to tell me that what I did isn't, you know, it's not that great and that it's only going to fail in a little while anyway. And that may be entirely true, but I, I've, you know, like I said, I'm an RC guy and I've got a lot of faith in this wire. This stuff is actually, you know, the soft silicone, thicker gauge wire. Like I said, I went with 16 gauge and I'm sorry. I went with 18 gauge and this is pretty good stuff. And I'm convinced that this will do the job with the stock location. So I'll check back in in some time and tell you if it is actually holding up the way I think it's going to. But I think it's problem solved right here. We're at 56 degrees. I think we're good. Okay guys, so here we are after the repair. You can see I've got nice hot temperatures and I'm printing some ABS. And so far it looks pretty good. So uh, initial impressions, it looks like my alternate wire hack might actually work. We'll let it go for a while, or I should say we'll give it some time and we'll see if this actually stands up over time. But until then, you know, in the meantime, it looks like it's not too shabby. All right, guys, so I'll post more long-term updates just to make sure that this stays fixed, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, our house one second up. Remember to mod it, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, do it all over again. Don't forget to check me out on all the social media stuff. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And also don't forget to check me out on the RC Physics Sandbox. That's a special site on Facebook that is really made for you guys. Talk about anything, anything, really, uh, just as long as you keep it clean. Um, and primarily RC stuff, but 3D printing as well, or just life, whatever you guys want to discuss. All right, guys, our house 21 signing out. Peace.